Good morning and welcome to a beautifully sunny but actually quite chilly ride in Essex where I'm completely on my own again. Yes, I'm on my own again because I'm still trying to get those 2023 miles in this year of which I am now at a serious deficit but also because the lads that I normally go riding with have got prior arrangements this morning but I had a bit of spare time so I thought well why not head out for a solo ride. And so as I'm trying to bring that mileage deficit down that I need per week when I was planning this ride last night I thought to myself well why not make it a long one and by the time I'd finished planning the ride I realized it was at 65 miles which is just over 100 kilometers and so I thought a video on how to plan your first 100 kilometer ride might be quite useful. Right hang on a second I need to put my sunglasses on because it is far too sunny I cannot see a thing. Much better right let's get on with this ride. Okay tip number one bike check. Performing a basic bike check before any big ride is absolutely essential. Making sure that your brakes work correctly, making sure that your gears are shifting smoothly, and things like having enough tread on your tyres. Essentially, you want to be performing an M check on your bike. And if you don't know what an M check is, if you imagine your bike basically as a big M, you start at the front hub or the front wheel, you go up the fork, checking everything at the handlebars, you then come down the down tube, checking your cranks, your chain, your bottom bracket, you go up the seat tube, checking your saddle's tight enough, and then down the seat stays to make sure that everything at the back, your rear cassette, your brakes, your derailleur and everything like that is working properly. Doing a proper bike check before you go out will not only stop any mechanical issues during your ride, but it will also stop any of those little annoyances like creaks and squeaks or skipping gears that can really annoy you. Because believe me, when you're a few hours into a long ride and you're having to put up with loads of little annoyances, it can really put you off your stroke. Oh, and if you're not confident enough to do the M check yourself or to give your bike a decent service or even just a decent check, support your local bike shop. Find a bike shop close to you, take it in and ask them to give it a good service, give it a look over and make sure it's all mechanically sound. This place is absolutely stunning. This reminds me very much of Northern France when I was doing the London to Paris trip last year tree lined beautifully quiet country road and on a day like this stunning. Tip number two having a decent repair kit. If you're planning on doing your 100 kilometer ride solo then you need to make sure that you can be self-sufficient out on the road and by that I mean being able to deal with any minor mechanical issue that the road can throw at you. Now the most common of those things is going to be a flat tire. So at the very least you want to make sure you've got a puncture repair kit with enough patches, a pair of decent tire levers and some kind of mini pump or a couple of CO2 canisters to blow the tire back up. Also if you're not confident in fixing a puncture by the side of the road by yourself then a spare inner tube is always a benefit. So you can just throw the spare tube in and get back on with your ride. If you're running tubeless then some bacon strip repair patches for any larger blowouts you might have and if you tear the side wall or any part of your tire completely then a small flexible piece of plastic to go on the inside of the tire just to cover the hole enough to put enough pressure in the tire to get you home is always beneficial. Parked or I think call it a boot. Not entirely sure why. Also a decent multi-tool is a must as it'll help you fix a variety of minor mechanical issues on your ride. Anything from a loose cleat bolt in your shoe to a loose spoke on your wheel both of which are issues I've had to deal with recently. It's a bit tight. expecting that monster climb up into Malden. Woo! But that was a cheeky little climb. <sighs> Tip number three, correct cycling kit. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, hopefully you'll know that I'm a massive advocate of just getting out on the bike in whatever kit you've got, on whatever bike you've got, and just have fun. That is the most important thing. 
However, when you're planning a long distance ride, like 100 kilometers, you really do have to have a decent pair of padded bib shorts. These will help you stay more comfortable in the saddle for longer and stop the majority of those aches and pains in your backside. Now, don't get me wrong, you're probably gonna be in the saddle for the best part of four to six hours, if not longer. So there are gonna be some aches and pains along the way somewhere. But by wearing a decent pair of padded shorts, you're minimizing that as much as possible and you'll enjoy your ride a hell of a lot more. Now, that's not to say that you need to do the entire 100 kilometers in one go. There's nothing wrong with stopping off, taking a break, and in fact, I'd actually encourage it. Maybe get a quarter of your way through the ride, halfway through the ride, take a stop, sit down, just enjoy the views, because that is what cycling's all about. Getting out in nature, enjoying your surroundings, and getting fit and healthy in the process. So yeah, you don't need to do it all in one go. Take it easy, take a few breaks here and there, and just enjoy yourself. Tip number four, bike tech. Now, an all singing, all dancing bike computer isn't necessary at all. However, they can be quite handy as they can warn you about various features on your ride. For instance, my Garmin 830 will always tell me if there's any sharp bends coming up on a road so I don't go flying off the other side of the road at a tight corner because I'm going too fast. But I've also got it set up to give me reminders to drink because I do have a tendency to forget that when I'm out on long rides. If you don't have a bike computer though, then your phone can do just as good a job by using Komoot or Strava. Now that won't give you all of the information that a dedicated bike computer will, but it will give you the bare essentials, enough to get you through your ride comfortably. Right, well I think I might be nearing my destination, which is Northy Island in Malden. It's an island that gets cut off from the mainland during high tide, and I'm not actually sure when high tide is at the moment, so uh, we might not be able to cross the causeway, but I guess there's only one way to find out. I think we're in luck because this looks like ultra low tide, although this path is a bit more uh, gravel bike than road bike. Yeah, definitely should have brought the gravel bike. Well, I think that's as far as we're going then, seeing as it's now mid-October and the island appears to be closed. <laughs> But we got across the causeway, which was the main thing. That's, that's what I wanted to achieve. Right, now let's, I think, head over there to Malden proper, and then we'll turn around and head back home. Right, let's do it. Get more gravel. Oops. All right, well that was Bertnoff, who was the Elderman of Essex and led the uprising against the Vikings in 991 AD. There you go, you get a bit of a history lesson on this ride as well. The Battle of Malden, who knew that was a thing? Tip number five. Fueling by eating and drinking properly is essential on any ride and that goes doubly for a long distance ride of 100 kilometers or more. Now I discussed this at length in a recent video on how to be a better climber, so I'm not gonna rehash that completely again, but essentially making sure you have a decent breakfast, something like porridge that has slow release carbohydrates to keep you going for longer, but then also when you're out on the ride, taking something like a banana or a sandwich, a bagel, anything that you can squash down small, stick in your rear jersey pocket and nibble on along the way. Now, as well as food, on a long distance ride, you're probably going to be sweating a lot. So replacing that fluid and replacing the salts that you've lost is also paramount. Now, I like to use the SIS hydration tablets. They're not that expensive, but you don't have to spend any money out at all because simply using your favorite juice drink, Ribena, orange squash, anything like that, with a sprinkle of salt in it will largely do much the same thing. Now, not only will eating and drinking right stop you from hitting the wall on your ride, or bonking, as it's known in the cycling world, but it will also stop the dreaded cramps, which can absolutely end a ride, or seriously hamper it at least. And talking of cramps, my mate Chris swears by salt and vinegar crisps to help you out replacing those lost salts. I don't know, is it an old wives tale? He seems to think it helped him on the Dunwich Dynamo ride we did recently, so fair play to him. Tip number six, prepare yourself mentally. Now this is a big one for me because there will undoubtedly be 
highs and lows on your long ride. Now the highs are fantastic and need pretty much no preparation for. Just enjoy them as you go. However, the lows can be really low and they can come from pretty much anywhere. For instance, when I was riding the 100 mile Ride London route last year, I was about three quarters of the way in, just heading back into London, and we were coming up to a junction that was being marshalled, stopping the traffic so we could fly straight through. Now, as I went through the junction, I rode straight past a marshal who had, and this is gonna sound strange, but the worst sounding whistle I've ever heard. It wasn't as if it was loud, it just didn't work. The noise coming out of it was nothing. It was just like he was blowing on a, a standard bit of plastic. And for some reason, it really annoyed me. This little annoyance had just wormed its way into my head and I couldn't get rid of it. And it really put me off my pedal stroke, like properly put me off my pedal stroke. But after about a mile or so, thankfully, I managed to give myself a bit of a mental slap and I was able to finish the ride and it was done. But it just shows you that these little annoyances and these mental lows can come from absolutely anywhere. So having some kind of plan for them is essential. It could be something as simple as just imagining the elation you'll feel when you finish your challenge. But if you need something more tangible, then maybe a small sweet treat or something that you enjoy to eat that you could have along the way just to build your mood slightly. So yes, do not underestimate the mental strain that a long ride, like 100 kilometers, will put on you, especially if it's your first one. Just keep yourself mentally prepared and keep the legs spinning. That's all that matters. Now, talking of keeping your legs spinning, tip number seven. Now, you could call this tip training. However, I prefer not to use that word because people do tend to have a preconceived negative connotation of what training is. And that's largely that it's a bit too much like hard work and that can stop them going out and doing any cycling. So I much prefer to frame it as just going out and enjoying more time on your bike. Now, dependent on your fitness level and the longest ride you'd ridden previously, you're probably gonna want to give yourself a good couple of months to build yourself up to 100 kilometers. Now, when you start out with your enjoying more time on your bike sessions, I would suggest you go for more of a time-based route. So pick a time, an hour, two hours, tell yourself that's how long you're gonna go out cycling for, regardless of how far you get. Now that will get your legs used to spinning for an extended period of time, but more importantly, it will get your backside used to being in the saddle for an extended period of time. Once you've built that up and you can stay in the saddle comfortably for about three hours or so though, then you can move on to a more distance-based route. Starting off with maybe the furthest distance that you manage to go in three hours, and then just slowly pushing it over the weeks and months, not forgetting sometimes to just back it off a little bit, just to give yourself a little bit of a break and to make sure that you're still enjoying time on the bike. Because remember, if you push it too hard, it's gonna to start to feel like training. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, don't think that you have to do the entirety of that three hour, two hour, one hour ride, whatever it is, in one go. There's nothing to stop you doing an hour, stopping for five, 10, 15 minutes or so, getting back on, doing another hour, because that is still gonna get your legs and backside used to being in the saddle. Most importantly, cycling should always be about having fun, no matter what goal you're trying to achieve. And finally, tip number eight. Now this might sound an obvious one, but it's worth mentioning because you will be amazed at how quickly a ride can go downhill or worse, uphill if you take the wrong turn. Now on your training rides, there's nothing wrong with just going out and intentionally getting lost just to get a few miles in the legs. However, when you're doing your proper 100 kilometer ride, it's best to have a route planned in advance so that on the day, you don't need to worry about anything other than looking at your head unit or your phone to figure out where you're going. And that way you can enjoy your route and you don't need to worry about getting lost, taking a wrong turn and doing a much longer route than you'd anticipated. Right, we are back. So that was in total with a few detours to go and see Burtnoff. I'm not sure if that's how you say it properly. My buddy Dave, who is currently living in Norway as a photography tour guide and knows about all things Viking and Anglo-Saxon, will be able to tell me the correct pronunciation. I'm sure he'll drop it in the comments. But yes, with a few detours, that was 67 miles or 108 kilometers in four and a half hours, which 
I'm pretty pleased with, to be honest. So yeah, it just shows you that doing 100 kilometers doesn't have to be the hardest thing in the world. And so long as you get your preparation done in the first place, actually, it can be quite enjoyable too. So let me know in the comments what's the furthest ride you've ever done. And also if you've got any other hints on how to prepare for a 100 kilometer or even a 100 mile ride, drop them in the comments below. You might be able to help someone else out who's preparing. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you as ever in the next one. Take care.